Hello everybody. I'm gonna be showing you how to make some watercolor flowers today. And these are the materials I'm gonna be using. This is Canson watercolor paper from Michaels. You can usually get it on sale. They always have a coupon. Um, but this is a good starter watercolor paper, nothing too fancy, but it does have some weight to it. So if you get too much water on it, it doesn't buckle terribly. This is just a very simple praying um, watercolor set that just has a couple colors to it. You can also mix everything over in this side of the tray, which is nice to get unique colors. And then I'm just using a couple different round brushes, one that's a bit more thin and a couple bigger ones. You can use kind of whatever brushes you have on hand, but they do make specific watercolor brushes that are nice and soft and help get the job done. All right, let's get started. Oh, also don't forget your cup of water. Okay, I'm gonna hold my paper horizontally or landscape. And what I like to do is I'm gonna kind of go through several different kinds of flowers and just kind of play with them. And then at the end, I'm going to arrange them onto like a wreath. Okay, so to get started, you always wanna make sure that your brushes are nice and wet. And I'm gonna start with a simple rose uh, flower. So roses can be whatever color you want them to be. And what's nice with watercolors is they don't have to be perfect right away. You can kind of build up the layers um, and have it partially be darker in some areas and lighter in others based on how much water you give it. So with my brush pretty wet, I'm gonna wet the red to start. And I'm gonna make it really transparent at first here, just to kind of get a general shape of what I'm gonna create here. The fun thing with watercolors is you can be experimental with it and you can add more water to spread color out. You can have maybe Q-tips or paper towel on hand to take up any extra water if you need to. And I'm just gonna get kind of a general blobby shape going here. And while that is still wet, I'm gonna create another one next to it, just to have a couple different roses. Now you can already see, I kind of intentionally pushed some of the color and the pigment down into the bottom left corner here. So I'm gonna have the center be a little off-centered and be up here, okay? And then down here is gonna be more, um, have more depth to it and more uh, color eventually. I'm gonna do another here and it takes a lot of practice obviously everything in art does but what's nice is they can kind of be abstract I like making watercolor flowers look more abstract while those are kind of drying for a second I'm gonna go ahead and draw some greenery and show you how fun it is to paint greenery whether it's eucalyptus leaves or another kind I'm gonna add a little bit of brown or red actually to this green to make it a little more neutral. It's kind of bright, bright green right now. It's not my favorite. So I'm just taking some water and mixing it in the top of my palette here and the colors and mixing it together. A nice trick for when you're painting with watercolors is if you have something that you don't really like, you can take some water, clean water, add it to a section and then blot it up and it'll get most of it up if you do it quickly. Okay, so I'm kind of just drawing a stem here. Kind of curves. I'm just making this out of my head. This doesn't have to look, you know, you could have a reference photo if you'd like. I kind of just like playing with shapes. I'm kind of creating some leaf shapes here. And instead of getting new paint on your brush every time you add a new leaf you can kind of take from what's already on the stem here and pull it up into your leaf so that's very lightly colored right so if i wanted to add some darker sections to it what i'll do is i'll saturate my brush really get a lot of paint on there and what i can do is just kind of like touch it to the area that i want the color to be spread to so for this, I'm gonna do the base of the leaf. And since it's still wet, it's going to spread up into the already wet leaf. This is called the wet on wet technique. And this is super fun um, to watch color do its thing and kind of spread out in a unique way. And there you have it. 
Now I also like to leave some white spots sometimes if I'm painting and kind of doing like an outline-y look. That kind of just gives it a painterly effect so you can have some contrast and some light areas, but you could fill it in fully if you wanted to. Okay, let's go back to our roses. I'm gonna again do the wet on wet technique where I'm gonna just drip a little bit of color and then I'm going to draw some shapes of where petals might be. And lightly add some color to it. Watch it spread. You also can shape the way that the color spreads by taking your brush. There is an extra hair on here. And with your brush being dry, it'll help soak up some of the extra paint that you have on there. And we'll come back to that guy in a little bit. Let's come to our orange buddy. This one I can get a little bit more detailed with because it dried faster because I didn't use as much paint. What I like to do is I like to create these in watercolor and then go over them with a pen or a pencil and kind of define some lines. Okay, so we're gonna do the wet on wet technique again and we're gonna do it with a sunflower. So I'm gonna make some brownish black and this is gonna be for the center of the sunflower. And I'm gonna do something called stippling, which is just adding little dots over and over again. With watercolor, obviously, they're gonna kind of bleed together, but that's okay. Now I'm gonna leave a white ring around the center here, so that way my colors don't bleed together. If they're still wet and you touch them to, to each other, they will bleed. But if you let it dry and then you paint it close to it, it won't. But I'm not gonna be patient here. I'm gonna mix um, my yellow orange and do some leaves. Now to get the full wet on wet effect, what you do is you take your brush and you get it super saturated and you actually just paint with water where you want your drawing or design to be. I'm just gonna start with three petals here so that way it's hard to see on camera obviously but I can see what I'm doing because it's kind of glossy and you'll see it on your own paper but then you go ahead and take your color and just touch it right to where you started to paint and the color will spread up into your painted wet area you can kind of help the color along by spreading it with your brush a little bit You want to make sure that it doesn't dry too quickly, so give it a good a fair amount of water. And then you can continue painting on or you can keep going with the wet on wet effect by adding more water. I'm just going to paint it in here. It might be helpful to start with just a circle around the center here where the middle is. A lot of water gathering here. Spread this down. Now petals don't have to look perfect, right? Because no flower is actually super symmetrical or very perfect. So don't be too hard on yourself if they don't look exactly the same. And add in some orange. Now areas like this is where it's getting a little messy. So I'm gonna make sure my brush is nice and dry. And then I'll go back in with a pen later on and really define these areas where the petals kind of overlap and it's hard to see where one starts and the other begins. And what I'll do is I'll let this dry for a little bit and then I can go back in and fill in that white space with more brown or black dots. We're gonna let that dry for a little bit longer. 
Okay, another flower I'm gonna do is we can do, I think they're hydrangeas. This is a fun one because you can do the stippling look. Those are the ones with a lot of the little flowers. And you wanna pull out the color and leave a lot of it like very light because you're usually like a pastel-y kind of flower. And you wanna leave some white spaces in between your little blobs that you're creating that's what it looks like in real life. Now I'm gonna draw lightly with some green where a leaf might be. I'm gonna do three of these so I'm gonna draw a leaf shape up here and then what I'll do is that it's gonna overlap it a little bit when I paint the next flower. So I'm just gonna do it very lightly so the colors don't bleed too much. And with a very wet brush, I'm gonna get my purple again. I'm gonna mix a little bit of blue with this one now. Make sure it's really, really wet. And pull out the color. And drag it down so it's more pastel-y. If it's too saturated, you can even take a towel or a paper towel and kind of like blot it to pull up if you make it too dark. And what I can do is, I don't like this area being as dark as it is. I would want it to be down here. So I'm just gonna dry my brush and pull down some of the color down there. And then go back in in that area and just drop a few little drops of color in the area that I want it to be darkest. And watch it spread. Okay, let's do one more. I'm gonna make this one purple again, maybe a little bit of red. We'll give it like a magenta. Again, I want this top part up here to be the lightest and down here to be the darkest. So I'm gonna clean my brush, dry it off, and try to push some of that pigment to the center. I'll drop a couple of drops of it in here to give it that depth. I'm gonna do the same with the purple because I'm kind of losing it up here. Oh, here you can see it starts to bleed into the blue. So that's not what I want. I'm gonna dry my brush and scooch it back. Could have waited a little bit till it dried, but. <laughs> okay, it's starting to bleed into the leaf a little bit up here, but that's okay. I'm gonna let it dry and then come back in with the green and go over it again. All right, so let's go back over here to this green work that we have here and our rose. Now I might add a little bit more detail with a darker pigment of green and just add like a few lines here and there maybe. Again, this can be done with a pen if you like that kind of illustrated look. All right, and let's go back in with our our rose. I'm gonna do this with like a dark purple. And what I'm doing is I'm just making, oh that's black, I'm just making kind of like half C squiggles around the rose here. Same with the orange rose. Again. All right, we're gonna do kind of just a more funky, creative flower now. 
Now you can make flowers look however you want. This is the fun part. I'm gonna do this one in black because I think that doing like a black and white flower is really fun. So it's gonna be kind of like a tulipy shape. And I'm gonna do it with the wet on wet technique. So I'm painting a shape that I want the black to kind of like fill in first. I'm gonna draw the stem and like a big leaf off of it. Now I'm gonna take my black and touch it to the wet and kind of spread it around. It looks very inky at first. But when it dries, it's super fun and very illustrated and painterly looking. Watercolor is a very tricky uh, medium to use if you aren't patient with it. It definitely wants to do its own thing. So you kind of have to learn to manipulate it, to have fun with it, to give it its own, you know, space to do what it's gonna do. Um, but it's definitely fun to experiment with. So I'm gonna leave the top part the lightest here and then I might go in with even more black and kind of darken up this area down here. So it's gonna go from dark to light. And there you have it. I love flowers like this because it's very like moody. It's kind of like a black and white photo. It's fun to play with it that way. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in and work on our sunflower. I'm gonna add some more dark spots. I'm not painting like one line to connect it. I'm kind of trying to still do the stippling effect to fill it in. I'm not trying to make all of the dots connect. I would like it to be darker on one side compared to the other. So I'm going to make sure that my brush doesn't have too much pigment on it when I do go to the other side. And then I'm going to add a little bit of dimension with my brush first for the petals and then I can go in later with a, a pen or pencil. So I'm just trying to get one side of the petals. I don't want them to look all the exact same, but just to get an idea of where they are. If your line feels too harsh, like I think this one does, wet your brush a little bit and then kind of blend it into the rest of the flower, or into the petal. Now I'm gonna do one more flower and then I'm gonna put them together and make a uh, wreath. So I like daisies a lot or black eyed Susans or any kind of flower like that. I'm gonna do one from the side. So I'm gonna start with kind of using the black as like a uh, you know, a pen to kind of start. And I'm gonna make a half circle like this because we're gonna be viewing this from the side. I'm gonna make this this orangey yellow again. I think it's fun. So from this angle, you see only some of the petals. And I'm gonna do kind of a sketch of where I want it to be first, and then I can go back in with my paint and fill it in, or I can leave it like this if I like the way that it looks. like this like sketchy look to it so I think I'm gonna leave it and then I'm gonna take my green and I'm gonna make a little stem to it add a little bit of brown to neutralize it so it's not so bright bright green and I'm not gonna worry about my lines connecting all the way down I'm just gonna kind of be sketchy with it and have a couple leaves 
coming off of it like that. So you can play with the angle that you see flowers at. You can look up different pictures um, or look at your own flowers in your garden or at your house and turn them in different angles and look at them from different directions and paint them that way. Okay, now let's paint a wreath. I'm gonna paint a couple different ones. We'll do like a Christmassy one and then I'll just do another one that's kind of wild flowery looking. And what I like to do is I like to take something that is round and trace that circle so that way we have a nice perfect circle. So let me find something that I can use. Okay, I found this glass, so I'm gonna use this to trace two different circles on my paper here. You wanna draw it pretty lightly because watercolor is pretty translucent unless you build it up. So you don't want it to be too dark. Okay, so when you're building these wreaths, it's nice to think about how you want them arranged. Do you want one focal point? If you do, do you want that bundle to be up on the top, on the side, on the bottom? Do you want it to be evenly um, balanced? Do you want something on both sides? You want just one giant collection down at the bottom? Think about that when you're creating these and they don't even have to go fully all the way around. I like leaving some of them open or really thinly um, place with plants along one edge and then have it full on another. So I think that's what I'm gonna do for this one. I'm gonna start with my greens and I'm gonna get my green and brown color. Now this is gonna be a little bit small because of how small I made these wreaths. But I'm gonna take a thinner brush here and I'm gonna start to paint some greens that are gonna come off of the circle. I'm gonna start with some that are right directly on the circle and then maybe I'll make a few that are coming off of it this way. Okay, I think I'm gonna have the center of my focal point of my flower arrangement be actually over here. So I'm gonna paint some kind of like mushy roses. <laughs> They're gonna be a little blobby. Then I'm gonna paint a couple tiny little daisies around it. And I like working in pairs of three. So I think I'm gonna have like a main rose here in the center, a couple small ones on the other side of it, and then a couple other small, small details growing that way. Now to do this kind of like fern-like plant, it's just a bunch of different size V's on one stem. So you can kind of paint a line and then add V's progressively going down on either side of it. Okay, while this one is drying for a little bit, well, let's move on to our Christmas wreath. So, What's in Christmas wreaths a lot are pine, obviously, and um, holly. And so to draw holly leaf, let me show you how to do that. You're gonna start with kind of a half circle or like a very slight bend, then come back down. So it's like an upside down V, another one, up to the middle, down this side, down this side, and then connect it here. I did a couple big ones here, and what I'll do is I'll go back in and add some small ones, I think, later on. I'm gonna draw in some holly berries. It's starting to spread, I'll give it a second. 
Sometimes these colors look nice though when they bleed together. I don't mind it too much. I'm gonna fill most of this with holly leaves and berries like this. And then what I can do at the end is put like a big bow on it or something. Now, if you don't celebrate Christmas, that's obviously totally okay. This is just kind of a wintery, we can call it a winter wreath instead. These plants come out in the winter time around here and they're just so beautiful is it grows in like sprigs. So it's a lot of little tiny pieces. It's kind of similar to a fern, the way you would paint a fern, but ferns usually have longer pieces to it. Pine is kind of like sticky and it has, <laughs> sticky, it looks like little sticks and it has little pieces that come off of it that are all about the same length. So you would paint a line and a bunch of little guys that are coming off of it. And they usually all grow, you know, off of one main stem here. So you can probably do four or five. If it's starting to get too light, you can add some paint and watch it spread inside your areas that you have already painted. It's helpful to have a really thin brush, as you can tell, to get really thin lines with your painting. Ooh, this guy spread a lot. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Let's go back over here to our colorful bundle here. I'm gonna soak up some of this purple because I think it got a little bit too dark. By doing that, I'm just getting a clean brush, drying it off, and then kind of soaking it up with the brush and rinsing it out again. And do the same over here with this green sprig. Okay, now I'm gonna take a Sharpie. I have a very thin tipped Sharpie I like to use, or you could use a pen, but for your, our purposes, I'm gonna use a Sharpie so you can see it better. And I'm gonna start to draw over top of some of the greens that I've done that are similar colors, so that way you can see them a bit better. Now, I'm not concerned about tracing over it exactly, because I like seeing a difference between where my line is and where the watercolor starts. So it's just to kind of add a little bit of dimension. To your piece. Okay, now I'm gonna start to define some of these flowers again. So with my Sharpie, I'm gonna give some squiggly lines to these roses. Maybe they're, not roses, maybe they're carnations. Carnations are a bit more uh, wiggly on their petals. Or ranunculus, those are more circular. Not fully dry it. Make sure that it's very dry before you go in and start to outline it. Let's go in and start to do that over here on our holly leaves. So, if you want to, you can outline the circle that you had drawn with your pencil to help define just like the ring of where your wreath exists. I did add a little bit of a brighter green into this one because I felt like it needed it. This one is a nicer, more pine color. It's okay if it's a little bit more subdued. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect with my outlines. I like the way that it looks when it's just kind of some lines that are near it. 
these pines are a little tricky, but I'm gonna add in some of them to help define the pieces. And there you have it. Reeds are super fun to play with and to paint on cards or for just wall hangings at home. It's so beautiful and you could always play around with different arrangements, different setups and how you balance them out. I think it's great for every season. You can come up with a new wreath for every kind of season or holiday. I think that they're so beautiful and I hope you all enjoyed this lesson and use these flowers in future creations of yours. My name is Sam Matthews. I run Art Across Borders Mobile Art Studio. I teach virtual classes, in-person classes, and create artwork of all kinds. So check out my website, artacrossborders.com and follow me on social media. Thanks so much for watching. Happy painting.